in this uh, Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, I want to talk about the mirrored subdivide quad uh, from the Parakit plugin, which you can find it in the curve, and here uh, is the component. So I just want to show you how you can use this tool to produce this pattern, which is really cool. And also, uh, we can use this to produce a square, rotating square, like this. Uh, also, we can use this tool to uh, maybe produce a checkerboard pattern, something similar to this. Obviously, this is not the best use of this uh, component, but I just want to explain how this can help you in your parametric design. So let's get started from scratch. What I want to do here is to go to the Parkit Curve uh, Mirrored Subdivide Quad component. And as you can see, the first input is a base polyline. Uh, to make this as simple as possible, uh, I want to use a vector grid and use a square grid so it's easy to understand base pattern. Uh, the default plane, I'm going to give this an XZ plane. So this is in the XZ plane. Let's just turn this off. This is an XZ plane, obviously. Uh, we can control the size. We just can give this a number slider. Give this a number slider for the size. And the numbers for X and Y can be from 1 to maybe 12. So this is the number of X and number of Y, OK? Uh, I'm uh, obviously uh, keeping this one to one so you can see how this mirrored subdivide quad is helping. Uh, before we go forward, because this square uh, component, when you increase the number of the UVs, the XYs, you can see that the output is into groups. Like it's like four groups of three. That is like the square grids are divided into rows. Because we don't need that, I'm just going to right click and flatten. So everything is in one group. For example, it's like 12 uh, cells. If you don't know about flatten or graft, you can watch uh, this tutorial up here. Or for those who want to know advanced uh, data management, they can enroll in our course. In PowerCourse, we have a complete data management section. Okay, uh, let's get back this to one and one and take a look how this is going to happen. Okay, uh, if, if you connect that to the base polylines, it's going to divide a cell or a polyline into four uh, basically cells. Okay, if I bake this, you can see that we have four cells. Uh, because I want to show you what's happening here, uh, I'm going to go to the surface, uh, use this evaluate surface. Uh, basically, when you connect a curve uh, to the surface, it's going to convert that into a surface. So I'm just going to uh, connect from the params menu a surface so you can see what's happening and then reparameterize that because we want to make it from 0 to 1 and uh, also again from 0 to 1 for the UV direction. And now we can use an MD slider, MD slider easily to move in these points. Okay, uh, let me turn this off and connect that to a point. So you can see each cell what's happening here, okay? Uh, if I rotate this, you can see uh, actually each point is mirrored and rotated. So there is two options. If you can see here, there is a mirror. It says uh, if you set true to mirror subdivide cells alternately, uh, the default is true. So I'm going to just right click and invert that. You can see that this is actually only rotating that, so you can always switch between true and false. That's it. I'm going to just put that to uh, false and use this as you can see here. If I connect these points together by a curve and a polyline and hit closed to true because we want to make it a closed pattern, uh, you can see what's happening here. Actually, we are playing with a cell and converting that into a pattern. So if I just increase the number of these patterns, you can see that we are actually playing here. Okay. 
So that's how we can do that. Uh, but uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is this example file, which is, let me just show you, it's a series of squares which have been used here uh, to produce the pattern. So what we here we want to do is to uh, actually explode each of these curves. So I'm going to delete this here. So actually what I want to do here, uh, let's put that into one and one again. Turn this on. This time I'm going to go to the curve and explode the cells into segments. So you can see each of these cells has four segments. Now if I go to the curve and select this point and curve tool and give it to the segments, uh, you can see that actually uh, each of these segments have different points. Uh, why am I using this? Because if I uh, connect that to a polyline and put it to closed, turn that mirror to true, what's going to happen is that this base pattern is going to be mirrored right here and then the hole is going to mirror up there. So this is going to help us to produce uh, interesting patterns if we want to uh, play with this point on curve tool. Now we can simply just increase the number of UV divisions, turn off the square grid, and if I connect a surface to this, uh, you can see that this is going to help us to produce a pattern. Uh, actually, uh, you can also work with another pattern, which I have used in this file, which is really cool. And something like this. Okay, what's happening here is that uh, we are making a center for this. Let's just go to back to one to one and the list, uh, delete this example file. And this time I have these points. Uh, again, let's just pick up the point on curve from the segments. And now I'm going to also find the center of each of these cells. So uh, we can go to polygon center, connect that to these cells. What I want to do here is actually connect this point to here, to here, and at the end, we're going to go to the center and then back to that point. So it's really easy. Uh, we have to make a polyline, connect that to the vertices, and also say that we want the center. Uh, because the center is not in groups, but this one is in groups, uh, again, if you don't know about flatten or graph, we can graph this. So uh, each of those groups uh, have the same number, and then we can close the pattern. Okay, now if I connect a surface to this and play with this point on curve, you can see that we can uh, produce an interesting pattern using this uh, Parkit plugin. Now if we increase the number of X and Ys, you can see that this pattern is also uh, interesting and you can change it by playing with this point on curve. Uh, the last section I want to explain uh, which you can use this is that this uh, subdivide curve if we go back to one to one is that it's four different polylines inside the uh, main polyline right so what i want to do here is to go to the sets and use this list item to pick each of these cells i want it's obviously four of them uh, if i connect a surface to this for example this is the first one and this is the second one. If I put and use the shift key to put them to uh, the first one and the third one into one surface, you can see that we have this pattern, which is a checkerboard. And also if you use that second and the last one, it's going to go to another group. So now we can increase the pattern. And you will also have a checkerboard pattern if you want to use that for this purpose. So these are uh, just uh, three simple patterns and. Uh, use of this mirrored subdivide quad from the Parkit plugin. Uh, I hope this tutorial was useful. Uh, remember to like and subscribe to our channel because we have uh, weekly tutorials. See you next time. Bye.